This video is about installing FreeBSD 12.1 into VirtualBox. Um, this is a short version of the video. I won't be explaining a lot, I'll just be doing it. So to begin with, we're gonna need two things. We're gonna need the FreeBSD media and Oracle VirtualBox. So to get the media, we're gonna to go to freebsd.org. We're gonna look at Get FreeBSD, gonna click it, gonna scroll down a bit, and we're gonna be presented with some images. We're looking for the Intel 64 bit, so that's AMD 64. We look at this list. Um, boot only is a good option if you don't mind waiting for the uh, files to download while you're installing, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab this disk one, .iso. I'm gonna save the file and it's going to uh, be available to us later. I already downloaded it, so I'm gonna skip it, but moving on. So to get Oracle VirtualBox, go to virtualbox.org. Go to the download section, pick your platform. I'm on Mac, so I click the Mac button, the OS X hosts, and then this is the uh, DMG file. I can save it, I've already done it. Um, you would open it, you'd run the installer, it would install, you'd reboot because it's gonna create a virtual network for the for VirtualBox instances. That's pretty much it and you'll be ready to go. So, two things. Download the disk one file, download VirtualBox. Once you've done that, you're ready to start up VirtualBox, which if I start it up, it takes just a sec and it pops up. The interface is pretty clear. We're gonna click new. I'm gonna click FreeBSD. I'm gonna call it short, but you can call it FreeBSD. Select BSD, select FreeBSD 64-bit. If it's not already selected, we'll skip expert and go to continue. We'll change this to 2048, but if you only got 1024, I'm sorry, two gigs, if you've only got a little bit of RAM, leave it at one, that's fine. You're gonna create a hard drive. Hard drive. Uh, we're gonna pick VDI as the default, it's fine. We'll continue. Dynamically allocated, that's good. We'll change it to 20 gigs. We'll change a few settings in here. We'll start with um, CPUs. I'll go into System. I'll click on Processor, and I'll change it to Two. And I could bail here and start over, but I'm I mean start on another configuration element. But I'll just pick them from up here. So we're going to pick Storage. Going to change the controller type from the old controller to AHCI, a little more modern controller. Going to select the CD. Going to choose a disk file. Going to browse to wherever I have my images. And look for the one that says FreeBSD 12.1, disk one. All right, and the last setting we'll change is in network, advanced, port forwarding, create a rule for SSH so that we can SSH to the local machine and have it go to our virtual instance. And put it on port 2424 on the host and on the guest, which is the virtual instance, we'll, we know that it's running SSH on port 22, or it will be when we set it up. Click OK, click Start. It's not actually gonna turn it on right away, it's gonna come on powered off. We have to pick the boot, the boot uh, device. Ignore this, this is from an old instance, but this one here is disk one, that's what we want. So we're gonna click start. With the AHCI controller on my Mac, uh, you can click and start a bunch of times, it doesn't really do anything that you can tell. But when I click cancel, it's gonna boot off that disk image anyway. So, a little quirk there, not sure what's going on. But 10 seconds, you can wait or you can hit enter. I'll hit enter. The white messages are from the kernel, the gray messages are uh, just informational messages displayed by various things that are starting up. We'll click install, which is just press enter. We'll press enter again for the US keyboard. If you got a different one, pick it. Name it, I'm gonna call it FreeBSD, press enter. I'm gonna deselect kernel debug because I don't need it, um, but could, could enable it and leave lib32 selected because we'll probably run 32-bit apps at some point. Enter, hit enter. Pick auto UFS or ZFS, either one is good. 
use the entire disk for sure. Choose GPT, it's just easier. And we're good with this setup, 19 gigs for the root, one gig for the swap partition, um, and there's a little tiny slice for boot off GPT. We'll click finish and commit. It'll go um, get the, the tar files, the zip tar files off of the, C, the, D, mm, the ISO image that we mounted that it thinks of as kind of a CD. And then it'll extract them. It should go pretty quickly. And uh, this is why we downloaded the disk one image. The, uh, the boot only image would do this. It would just go off getting it off FTP and it would take quite a bit longer. It'd still be fetching files at this point. We have to set a root password, it won't echo. But you type it once, type it twice. And if you got it right, it goes onto this menu, otherwise type it again. So select your, your uh, network controller. This is the one that VirtualBox provides, the Intel Pro. We'll say okay. Would you like to use IPv4 for sure? Would you like to use DHCP? Yes. It's going to fail at first, then it'll correct itself and uh, it'll start working. It says, do you want to use IPv6? We'll say no. The resolver uh, correctly picked up my DNS servers that I have configured for the, on my router, but if not, you can type them in. These are the OpenDNS server um, IP addresses, 208.67.222.222 and 208.67.222, sorry, 220.220. 220. Um, you could also use Google's 8.8.8.8 .8 four times and 8.8.4.4. Uh, That's a work too. Pick your time zone. Mine's in America, United States of America, Central most areas time zone, CDT, yes. I'm gonna skip it. It is the uh, it is August 5th. It is close enough to 5:40. Well, I can change that. So I use the arrow keys to get it where you want it and set the time. We'll pick um, for services. We'll pick local unbound. That's caching DNS thing. Um, SSHD for sure. Mouse daemon, yes. NTPD, don't need it. NTPD, we can use it. PowerD, for sure. Dump dev, that's fine. Uh, I say PowerD for sure. It's not for sure. It's just doesn't hurt anything. As far as system hardening goes, we're going to skip it. Would you like to add users? Yes. Name your user. Use the same username you use on your system unless you have some other compelling reason to change it. I'm going to type in my full name, leave the UID at the default. I'm going to pick my login group to be the same as my username. And I'm going to invite in this user to the wheel group, space, operator, space, video. The operator group gives us access to some uh, mount operations, stuff like that, uh, some administrative capabilities that we don't need root for. Video um, is for doing the GUI stuff later. So we'll pick those, leave the class, login class to the default. SH is a good shell, we'll use it. Home directory is fine. Home directory permissions are the defaults. We're going to use passwords. We're not going to use an empty one or a random one. Type it once. Type it twice. Don't lock out the account. Looks good. Type yes. Add another user. Nope. We're done. We can hit exit. It's finished. Do you want to do something in a shell? And sometimes I say no, but we'll just say yes. Now we can do... Um, now we can type shutdown dash p now, which powers the machine off. Otherwise, we could have let it do the reboot and we would have the CD attached, but we're going to detach the CD before we boot again. So we go into storage 
and we click the CD. Well, actually, click, yep, click the CD, click the CD, remove disk from virtual drive, say OK, and we'll start it up. We're going to start it headless, live on the wild side a little bit. And you'll see what it's doing there while I pull up the terminal. I open the terminal. If you have putty, you can bring up putty at this point. You can see that it's putting in the background even though there's no CD, so it's got it on the hard drive, yay. We can watch the messages go by. I can't see them, they're too small, but we can kind of get a feel for what's going on. If anything goes horribly awry, we'll, we'll be able to tell here in a sec. All right, it's got a login prompt. You can barely see it, but it's there. Good, then I'm going to um, log into the instance, which is log ssh-p 2424 is what we said for the port, and it's on localhost. That'll log us into the remote host. Anyhow, um, we don't know about this key yet. Um, here's its fingerprint. If we were doing this over a network, we'd care about this a little bit more, and we'd want to be sure we had the right fingerprint and matched. Um, but we're just going to connect because we know what we're doing. So we say yes. It added it to our list of known hosts, which is good. We won't be prompted like this again. It's just asking us now for the password that we typed in when we created it. I type it in. It welcomes us to FreeBSD. Yay. That's a good thing. We want to become root so we can do some updates. And we'll um, type in the root password. And now we're root. So I'll clear the screen, control L or clear. Um, just so we can have a fresh page to start off of. And I'm going to do the, uh, the update. So let's do FreeBSD update. If you type part of a command and hit tab, it'll finish it off for you. Tab completion, FreeBSD update. Fetch is what we want to do to get the updates and install to install them. It'll go and get these off the internet. I'm not entirely sure how it selects the various updates. Sometimes I get less packages that are updated than the next time or vice versa. So we just let it do its thing. Maybe it's because I picked a slightly different set of packages to be installed initially. It'll download the uh, updates, it won't take too long. Yeah, 295. Sometimes it's 400, sometimes 700, sometimes it's very, very interesting. But meanwhile, it's applying the patch, or it's not really applying the patches, it's looking to see what will be required to apply the patches at this point. Um, in a second, it's going to give us a list of the things that it's going to actually do, and then when we have reviewed them, it'll apply the patches. And this won't take long. Okay, so one thing it's going to do is remove the GodTab um, time zone. Don't know what it is, but uh, it's good to know. So we hit Q to get out of this thing where it's prompting on the end. The following files will be added as part of updating another time zone. NUC. We don't. I don't use it, so I just hit Q. Don't care. And then it shows a huge list of files that you can page through. You can um, you can scroll through. There's all the files that it's going to change, but which you might want to look through, but I'm not going to. I'm going to hit Q. And then it's going to install the updates. It's going to take 30 seconds or so to do these actual patching. There we go. And now it's, it's, um, it's updated. We're going to reboot at this point. So I'm just going to type reboot, which is going to end my SSH session as well as in the background it's going to um, shut this guy down. And then it'll start back up. We'll go through the 10 second uh, boot menu delay that's gonna happen back here and then we'll log in through SSH. SSH is just way easier to use, but you can also um, show this console. Just hit show and it'll be a regular console. You just can't copy and paste between the windows or anything unless you install um, VirtualBox guest extensions and do some more work, which we're not doing right now. So it's sitting here waiting, and then it finished waiting, and now it's moving on. We can wait for it to settle. 
we can also just try to log in and it'll sit there and eventually it'll either time out or when it finishes this stuff my login yeah there you go type in your password we're back in we can tell we're going to do a couple of updates so we're going to do package update which will um, it'll bootstrap the package utility by downloading the latest version <coughs> it's not installed here so we're going to say yep it installs it except it won't because I'm not root but we'll see what happens when you do it as not root there we go package field extract couldn't create the directory so we got to become root first and then package update same same question but different response uh, said yes and verified now it downloads it does the update it's updating the metadata for all the packages there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 30,000 of these lots and lots of software okay 31950 now we're going to upgrade any packages that need upgrading I don't there shouldn't be any because we just did the upgrade but we'll check anyway there we go and that's good so all our packages are up to date um, if we look at our name uh, sorry that just tells us we're free SD, your name dash a tells us that we're on patch level seven okay so we're completely up to date and ready to go so let's get we need sudo because I get tired of logging in so package install sudo sudo we'll use package to download a sudo package off the internet and it'll install the three required packages of git text index info and so on and so forth we're going to say yep goes and gets them, installs them, and we're ready to go. So I'm going to configure sudo by using a program called vi sudo, which is basically using vi against the sudoers file, but it's the required approach according to the main page. We're going to go vi sudo, hit enter. It's going to pull up the sudo, sudoers file, which is in user local etc. Um, in here, there's a line for wheel, so I'm going to hit slash, search for wheel. Scroll down to the one that doesn't require a password because I'm lazy. Going to delete the first two characters, write it, and save it. Going to exit as root. We're going to test it as a regular user. So sudo ls shows me all my files. It is where we want to be. So let's take a, just take a little bit of a tour around. We'll look at the version, the kernel version and the user land version. They're both patch level 7. Sometimes they're not totally in sync, but most of the time they are, so it's good. Or sometimes they are, I guess. Um, that's it. We're going to reboot again. If we try to reboot as a regular user, it doesn't work. If we sudo reboot, that's the same as if we were um, root and tried to reboot. I guess we already tested, but uh, it's going to reboot, so we'll let it. Pretty much any time before it starts the actual boot process, you can actually power this off uh, without it hurting anything. But once it gets started, you kind of want to leave it. You want to let it go through, and then you want to shut it down properly so that disk, disks are written properly and you don't corrupt anything. All right, log in. And a couple of files you should know about are bootloader conf and Etsy RC conf. If we look at what's in bootloader conf, there isn't anything. If we look at what could be in there, we look in the defaults uh, for the loader. Um, we can see that there's lots and lots of uh, settings that we can set. The one that we kind of want to set right away is um, an auto boot delay. We want to use this parameter right here. So we could use VI or we can use a program called um, sysrc which requires root privileges and we tell it what file we want to modify.
uh, and the parameter we want to set. Fudge fingers there. All right, um, basically I want to type sudo sysrc, which is the program we're going to use, dash f, tell it about the loader comp file we want to modify and the setting we want to set, which is auto boot delay, and we want to set it to a one second delay instead of 10. There we go, if we cat the file, we can see that we correctly set the settings. The other file is etcrc.conf. And we can see all of our settings that we set during the setup or the install, they're all here. Um, you could add them manually or using sysrc, it would be the same effect. So if you didn't change anything in the initial install, um, you could modify the file here and restart. But then you wouldn't have networking and all that convenient stuff. So we did it during setup. That's kind of it. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to shut it down. So sudo shut down dash p now. There's nobody else on the system. If there were people on the system, I could do plus 30 seconds, plus 120 seconds, whatever I wanted to do, plus 10 minutes, whatever, whatever made sense. And it would message everybody that's logged in. So we're going to shoot down with power off now. Kills my SSH session, beeps at me, and then proceeds to shut down. The last thing I want to show you is how to snapshot the VM. So once it's back at this name of the VM uh, screen, I go to snapshots and I click take and I could call this uh, baseline or whatever I want to call it. But that takes a snapshot. We continue running on the current state, but if we want to ever go back, like if I screwed something up, we could just click baseline and restore and it would restore us back to that point. That is it. Be sure to leave questions below in the comments. Thanks.